Welcome everybody to the Fantasy Golf Insider webcast and podcast. I'm Jeff Bergerson, joined as always by my partner, Zachary Turcott. We are with FantasyGolfInsider.com, and if you have not become a premium member yet, what are you waiting for? It's only $12.99 a month. It's a great deal. $129 a year for the best advice in DFS golf around. Come check us out. We got articles, research tools, everything that you need to be a profitable player playing DFS golf. So do that now. Uh, this broadcast is available as a podcast on iTunes and Stitcher. Give us a five-star review. Say something nice about us. We'd appreciate that. Also subscribe to our YouTube channel so you know exactly when our webcast comes out every week. Thank you to all of you who join us every week. We really do appreciate it and we do our best to give you the best information possible. Before we get rolling, Zachary, I have a special shout out going out to an FGI Premium member this week. Craig Chinoski won the $20,000 Mulligan Tournament Excellent. last week awesome. on DraftKings. Now that's great in itself. But he also won a GPP a couple of months ago, a large yeah. field GPP as well. He's rolling. He is. Sent me an email, and you're going to love this. In his email, he says, uh, FGI's insight suggestions and information works. Took me two full months since my last GPP win. <laughs> <laughs> two full months. <laughs> Yeah, as if they're that easy to come by. <laughs> Took me two months, yep. but I got another one under That's my good. belt. So, yeah. but thanks to you guys, I won again. He also says in those two months, he's he's only come out um, behind one of those weeks. He's That's, been ahead every other week. So. That's awesome. We get. I've had you know we've had our own struggles with cash games and things. They've been kind of up and down and up and down. And, yep. And every every week. I'll get an email from somebody else. We had a we had a guy the other week who said, "Oh, it's ten straight cash games right. that I've won in a row yeah. on here." I'm thinking, that is almost a miracle. That's awesome, considering the players who have been missing the cut weekend right and weeked out to be able to navigate through uh, like that is is pretty incredible. So people have had some successes, and you know, like I tell the people who have struggled a little bit that are out there, we've been right on the edge for, for the most part. I mean, if yeah. you look at just this, this last week, it's just one or two guys each week yeah. that prevent it from being just a good week to going up to a great week. Yeah. So, you know, stick with it. I know most people out there are, are really into the GPPs. And I say, if that's the way that you're going to play this game, you got to be looking at it from the perspective of there are going to be droughts. Oh yeah. Where yeah. you go. Two, two months, <laughs> three weeks, right? At a time. With, yeah. No, but it, it's going to happen. I mean, if you're just stacking up GPPs every week, like most players do, you're going to go through stretches of six, seven weeks yeah. sometimes where you don't, you, know, you break even, maybe you win a little, you have a few weeks where you get hit pretty hard in terms yeah. of losses. Oh, yeah. Because it's an all or nothing game. It is. <clears throat> but you got to stick with it. You got to stick to your process, keep sharpening your process. Like we've really, we've really over the last couple of months tried to drill down because I think people for a long time, we're just kind of firing scatter shot at right. putting together GBP lineups through a lot of the names they've got, but really sticking with the process of your core players, your secondary players, your third players that are out here yeah. and the periphery. You know, once you start to get that process down week in and week out, your results are gonna start to improve. For sure. So you know, don't look at a week like CH3 missing or Snedeker missing a few weeks back when he's the highest owned and think. Man, this is just terrible. What am I doing wrong? Probably nothing. Yeah. Probably yeah. just that's I mean, the variance in DFS. Yeah, it, it, exactly. It's probably just the variance of the uh -huh. game. So you know, stick with it. There are people out there who are having success. So oh uh, yeah, you know, just keep working at it, and you get there. So congratulations, Craig. You are a freaking stud. You have no damn idea how tough it is to win GPPs. But congratulations. Keep up the hard work, my friend. Uh, let's recap the Wells Fargo Championship as long as we're yeah. talking about last week. Yet again, a player wins that makes no sense to anybody James, coming into uh, the event. Yeah, there were the, some ridiculous tweets early in the week just even asking oh, specifically, yeah. why is James Hahn priced at 7000 this week? Yeah. And after the tournament ended, I just, to myself, I had forgotten what the price was. So, oh, another guy below 6 k winning and right. somebody laughing. And then I looked and I thought, James Hahn was 7,000 right. this week. That's Eight consecutive missed cuts. Yeah, he hadn't, hadn't done a damn thing nothing, at Quail Hollow. Nothing since the Saturday afternoon when he was leading late into the afternoon out in Phoenix. Yeah. And he hit a couple of balls just out of bounds, and his game absolutely fell to pieces that day for the next eight times out. Yep. And then somehow this week he managed to put it all together and, and hang on as 
Castro crumbled down the stretch. So it was pretty amazing. And I thought for sure we'd be seeing Ricky or Rose there at the end of the day yep. on Sunday. I mean, both of those guys looked so good late Saturday afternoon. And all they really had to do was just post Hunt. an even <laughs> car around the last day. I mean, just, yeah, they didn't even really have to post the big number out there to get in there, but neither guy was doing it. I mean, when Ricky came out and it was over after the first hole, yeah. right? Yep. He looks like he's going to be able to get up and down, you know, makes a nice, looks like a nice save from off the green, gets yep. about three feet away, and then lips out his putt. And I thought, wow, this is... This is bad. And when he double bogeyed the par five after chunking it into the water, I mean, it was it was ugly. And Rose still was missing the short putts. Missed a lot year. of putts. He was putting himself in a range to score and just couldn't get one 10-footer to drop. No. I mean, he didn't miss too many easy ones, although the last one that he missed for a bogey on 16 right. certainly did crush him. Yep. But the guy was striking the hell out of the ball. I mean, it was a great pick. We both loved him last week. After yeah, missed, total contrarian play. Missed the cut the week before. You jump right back That's in. That's right. And sure enough, there he is. He shows up again. Um, overall, I was really happy with the picks that I made in terms of my, my five-man core there where I weighted five guys at 60% in my $3 games. Four of those guys made it through. One of the more unlikely names that did not, Charles Howell the third. Crushed you. Yeah, absolutely. I had, uh, I had him 100% on all three of my $300 teams for the week along right. with Phil Mickelson. And I had three five of six teams in the 300. God. So if... Uh, you know, and, and that team, my best team there finished uh, 28th for a week. So if, you know, CH3 gets through, right. I'm contending. If Rose wins, then, you know, I'm, I'm in a pretty good position. But neither of those things <laughs> happened. So I cashed two of those teams this week. I only had one guy in at secondary group being Webb Simpson. Another strange miscut. I, I don't know what what to make of his he game. He looked really bad. It wasn't like he just barely missed the cut. Yeah. He looked bad from and, the get-go. And that's really my worry with him is it wasn't like he was ever competitive. No. There wasn't one second. And this is a course that he has, he has a house yeah. on that course. Yeah. So say whatever you will about tournament history. The guy's probably played hundreds of right. rounds right. at this course. So yep. he is incredibly familiar. So that really says to me, Something's just something's not clicking for yeah, him. Yeah, I, I saw every one of his shots on PGA Tour Live because he was in the the feature groups, and he was missing the green badly. He was either way short, way long, and, and the that's winds his game. weren't that. that, that tr- no, no, they weren't that. Great, and that's so. his game. Like that's his strength. That's and right. If that part of his game is broken down yeah. at all. He's screwed. he's not going to rally with the putter. So no. those were the two big picks that you know that I missed on. Overall, you know, held ground for the week. Made made some money in the three hundred, which was a little lucky, a little fortunate. Yeah. You know, but it was an exciting tournament. The Thursday afternoon when I looked at the top 10, I was baffled by what I saw on the leaderboard. Oh, yeah. It was Some big be- names. between Rory <laughs> absolutely dying away in the first round and then a lot of the other guys really struggling to get off to a fast start. Right. And you looked up at the top 10 and you just thought, what in the world when Trevor is Trevor Immelman is, is fluctuating in and out of the top 10, you know you're in trouble. Yeah, I mean, the whole, the whole leaderboard that day, I just thought, this is, this is absolutely crazy. And then the next three days, it just got more and more sane as we went along. Yeah. And by Saturday, Sunday, most of the big names had risen back up to the top. So it was a fun tournament. It was a good way to sort of push us closer back into the semi-major season here yeah. with the players here and yeah. then on to the U.S. Open next month. So, Just one thing I want to touch on is I received a couple of emails from members who were asking me, how are we? How can we identify guys like James Hahn coming into a week who are going to win the tournament? And, you know, honestly, you can't. <laughs> if you can, you, let you, me know. Yeah, right. No one in the world can identify these guys coming out of, you know, eight consecutive missed cuts, no turn, you know, not good tournament history. You're not going to be able to do that on a consistent His basis. Stats aren't going to show you anything Nothing. as far as why he would show up there. No. I mean, there's n- there's no reason why. And, nope. and his price wasn't that affordable. So you wouldn't be, if you were going to put, you know, like a Ricky Rory type of roster together at the top. You wouldn't have him. Han's there, not yeah. low no. enough. You're looking down into more of the Castro range. Right. Castro was an option that I had looked at. He was one of the last guys yeah. off last week. But Castro, I could see where people would find him having done really well yeah. in the last few years there. But Han... There is there is just isn't a way that you're gonna find guys like Han. You're gonna you can try with if you have a hundred GPP teams to throw in a handful of just random names. Well, then we're calling it luck. Gets. Exactly. You know, then we're calling it luck. But and here's you're just spinning the wheel. Right. But here's the good news: is you don't have to no. I- identify James Han. Nobody. The winner in the three dollar, the thirty three dollar, or the three hundred dollar. None of them had him. None of them had James Han. And none of them had. And there was only I think when I looked in the three dollars, there was only one guy in the top ten That's right. that even owned him. And so. 
Yeah, you didn't have to have no. him last no. week in order to, to be successful. Would it be nice if you took a flyer on him and you hit everyone else on your team with James Hahn? Sure. Yeah, that'd be great. But the problem is you can't if, do it. The problem is if you're gonna take flyers, you're not just gonna take it on uh, that one <laughs> the, guy the, and the, hope that guy. that's the guy. That was the to, whole issue. You have to do it with a handful of guys, and then you have to be perfect for the rest with of everyone your team. else. Yeah. And you can't put two of those guys on the same team because your no. odds are just terrible that that both of those guys are no. getting through. So. We yes. need to accept that there's extreme variance and extreme unpredi- in pre- unpredictability. 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 All right, unpredictability with DFS golf, and you're just not going to be able to hit those long shots who have no right winning. Even though we've seen several of them this and you year, you really shouldn't be trying to. No, you shouldn't be trying. You're going to blow most of your bank. That's right. Most guys don't play enough teams week to week. If you're yep. playing 15 or 20 GPP teams, you can't yeah. afford to throw away five of them. On just total shots in the dark that are out there, you got to make everyone right. count. So, yeah, should we take some shots? Yes, we should. Is this the most obvious shot of the week it that was we've over had? as soon as I <laughs> as soon as I saw the DQ? It right. seems to be a running theme. Somebody <laughs> does something just absolutely stupid for being DQ. Do you want to talk about it? I'll sure. let you talk about the DQ this week. Yeah, why not? That's one of my favorite things to do in terms of looking at the scorecard. You look at, because uh, I always look at the end of Thursday and before Friday starts, because there's always going to be a guy who withdraws. Right. Usually he's on one of our teams. <laughs> and, then, and then I'm hoping to see, I'm hoping to see a DQ yeah. <laughs> next to somebody, because immediately then I'll go on to Twitter and look at the PGA media page to figure out what would happen. What happened? Well, yeah. you know it's entertaining when the PGA media page retweets <laughs> the player's tweet. In this case, Zach Blair actually, after he did this, <laughs> went to Twitter, found found a, a, a short video of, of another player who had gotten disqualified for He found a, a, a short little video of Woody Austin years back. And in the, in the video, you see Woody Austin, he's, and, and he's dressed in red, white, and blue, like U.S. flag <laughs> colors, very patriotic. And he just <laughs> slams his club repeatedly into his head, clearly bending the club. And I didn't see the video of Zach Blair doing this, but Zach Blair uh, missed a putt, slammed the club into his head, did bend the club, tapped in his par putt. Uh, I think it was on a par five. And uh, and then noted afterwards that the club had been bent and he'd used it. And these guys, they're you know they have an extreme amount of integrity. Right. Went up and yeah. explained it to the rules official, yep. and he's out. He's <laughs> done. And that's it. And when you when you get disqualified for bending your club against your head, how hard do you have club? to hit it on your head to bend your freaking well, club? Woody Austin was doing it very very hard. If wow. you look at the video there, it's it's pretty amusing. And again, what 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 is that doing right there? I mean, he, whatever chance you actually had of making money for the weekend, probably yeah, right. gone right there. So, um, and it's strange because a guy like Zach Blair. I mean, he's a BYU guy. He's, yeah. He's a Mormon guy. Right. He's, it's not like he's a, a real fiery tempered, <laughs> you know, <laughs> individual here. This is, this is a non-drinking guy, young guy. He's, he's married. You know, you'd think he's, yeah. he'd be pretty well composed. He'd be very focused. But right. I guess not. And so thank you for providing a very entertaining disqualification for the week. And, Beautiful. And uh, we'll drink to the Mormon. <laughs> Thanks, Zach Blair. If you like our Fantasy Golf Insider shot glasses, be sure to check out our online store. You can grab up those. Grab up the cocktail glasses. They're pretty sweet. So, Wacky wager of the week, Zachary. How'd that go this week? Recorded another W. Victorious? Yeah, and what was fantastic about that was I won a, a big Phil Mickelson portrait. Oh, I think sweet. it's a framed one, so oh, I'm nice. excited about that. We actually had another guy who was trying to offer us one who was on Twitter a while back and that guy kind of disappeared. I don't know where I don't know where Jimbo Slice is. Jimbo Slice, if you're out there, tweet at us. We haven't heard from you in like a month. You just sort of disappeared. But um, so he put up the uh, a big frame picture of, of Phil Mickelson. And what was really outstanding was the fact that I ended up actually winning because of Phil, Phil Mickelson's Mickelson. huge final round. Yeah, right. after he absolutely tanked it on, uh, on Saturday by hitting a, a snowman there on 18. I was pretty discouraged. I, uh, he had only gotten two players through the cut. I only gotten three players through the cut. So it was a, it was a real pillow fight type of a battle. <laughs> Unfortunately, one of the weapons that he had there was Ricky Fowler, who jumped up in the first place. So he had actually right. vaulted into the lead oh, after wow. Saturday. I thought, if, if I lose to a guy who gets two players through the cut, I'm going to be pretty embarrassed. So <laughs> fortunately, Phil, Phil put on a show. Ricky fell back a little bit. Everything worked out, and so we should have a... And that uh, was from Will Bond, right? 
Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So we'll get a big right. framed. Thanks, Will. Uh, that's cool. Phil picture here. That's awesome. To hang on the wall of him jumping up. At yeah, the that's Masters sweet. To Love that. A few years ago. So that's awesome. Very exciting. And story. what do we got brewing this week for Wacky Wagers? I'm taking offers right now because we've okay. got all of the Masters gear. Oh, you're gonna that do that I picked this up. week. So I've got a Masters T-shirt. Hat, golf balls, ball markers. Jesus. So we're going to put all of those things up, but it's got to be a good wager. I'm not going to take your old t-shirts on this one. <laughs> I'm going to take your old worn out hats. It's got to be something cool. It's got to be... That's a huge package. <laughs> <laughs> you better believe it. <laughs> so, yeah, you, you better put up a nice offer this week in, in terms of what the prize is going to be. Um, so I'm going to take submissions, tweet a picture of what you've got to offer, a really good description over the next day or two. I'll probably decide by Wednesday uh, who I want to go up against, and then we'll, uh, we'll have a good wager on that. So yeah. For the Players' Championship this week, yep. we are at TPC Sawgrass, the stadium course, 7,215 yards, par 72. Of course, everyone knows it by the signature 17th, Island that isn't really an island green, but they call it the island green. Really thin peninsula. Yeah, thin peninsula. So yeah. uh, obviously another peat dye design course. So if you want to take a look at results of other peat dye design courses, feel free to do that. Uh, some of those include Harbor Town, RBC Heritage, TPC River Highlands for the travelers. Uh, we saw TPC Louisiana a couple weeks ago for the Zurich. And then, of course, the TPC Stadium course at La Quinta for the career builder this year. So take a look back at those results if you want to see Pete Dye design courses. They're all over the place. And another thousand, but those are just the main ones that the PGA Tour sees yeah. every, week, uh, every year. Um, it's as stacked of a field as we're going to see all year. Most of everybody in the top 50 is going to be there. There's only a couple omissions. As you'll remember, Ricky absolutely went on an influential run last year. I think everyone has seen it multiple times where he just absolutely dominated at the end and then in the playoff. So people are going to remember that. Key stats this week, strokes gained tee to green, strokes gained putting. Mm -hmm. Ball striking, we want accuracy off the tee, we want accuracy approaching the green. It's yeah, super it important. Yeah, you better hit the green on 17. Uh, if you don't hit the green on 17... <laughs> There are going to be some balls in the water. There's a ton of water yeah. on sawgrass. but So we're looking not so much at bombers. Now, it's not going to hinder bombers that much unless they're incredibly inaccurate because they're bombing away. It's just going to level the playing field for the guys with less distance. Because the guys who make mistakes here are just going to get killed. That's right. Look at Brooks Koepka yep. last year. He posted a pair, not one, but two snowmen. So he had two mm -hmm. eights in the opening round. Still scored like crazy the rest of the day and the next day. Almost came back and made the cut miraculously. I think yep. he posted, I think he posted fifty points in the two rounds that he played for a missed cut, which is amazing. Absolutely, you will never ever see something like that. Right. In in maybe ever again. Right. As far as fantasy golf is concerned, unless a guy hits like one or two holes in one. True. That's really the only way when the absurd scoring system out there that <laughs> that they've got. <laughs> What do, you, like what do you really think Dirt about that? Dirt McGirt can plop in a hole in so one sick. And, and, and is now an amazing scorer for the week. Um, so, yeah, so guys who get behind the eight ball here and make a couple mistakes, hit the water a couple right. of times, if that happens early on, they're just not going to make the cut. And right. we saw that with a lot of big names. Yeah, we last. sure did. Jason Day, Spieth. Spieth. Yeah. Yeah. Matt Kuchar missed the cut, right? Matt Kuchar is a peat die course yeah he is guy. so yep. that is a, when that happens you know things are it can happen to crazy. anybody and you'll see that looking back at the tournament history there isn't a lot of real consistency for everybody many hits a landminer that's two right. at some point going yep. on in history so i think the field distribution in terms of ownership we're, we'll see it spread out a little bit more than we have in the last few weeks obviously yep. with the number of stars there that will help but a lot of those, a lot of people are going to be real hesitant to look at some of those guys, like uh, like a Bubba Watson, <clears throat> you know, like a DJ, yeah, and even like Adam Scott. I think a lot of people are just are going to be a little, a little bit, uh, a little concerned in terms of what do I do with these guys who haven't just lit it up here one right. year after another, who I can just put most of my yeah. money on. So I think there will be a handful of guys at the top. And then there'll be a couple guys in the middle that a lot of people are going to gravitate towards. I will put some waiting on scrambling. Now, obviously, you can't scramble out of water, <laughs> but the yeah. rough is incredibly thick. So if you do get off the beaten path, you need to scramble your ass off to try and get back. Uh, yeah. You know, there's several players in the field that we'll talk about that do that well. So that's kind of the statistical outlook that we're favoring this week as far as waitings. Mm -hmm. If we dive into the players, 
up top, you had mentioned that you were not going to see a lot of gravitation toward one or two guys in ownership this week. I think it's going to be a little bit more level. I think starting at the top, though, there will be plenty of action on the top name there, and that's going to be Rory. Yep. I think it's warranted. We've seen him really struggle early in the season, improving along the way, starting to really put it together. You can see he's just about ready to peak. One of these weeks, he's just going to go off it. It was very close to happening this last week. If he had he not just started out so miserably the first right. day and had to fight back for yeah, the rest of the far. weekend, I think he would have cruised. I mean, I think he just would have ran away with it. Yep. I could have easily have seen him firing like a minus 14 if he just would have started off anywhere near what he did the last day. So do you like him this week? Yeah, absolutely. Is he going to be on a lot of your rosters? I think so. I mean, even at the high price, it's a little bit lower than last week. And I think this week you can afford to have a guy like Rory start off at the top and not really have to compromise in terms of the rest of the guys that you're going to put into your lineup. Yeah. Because there are so many value players <laughs> who are pushed down from the 8s and 9s into the 7s and 8s, yeah. down into the 6s. So you don't make a big sacrifice no. by starting your roster with, with Rory with the number of guys that you're going to have available in the 6K range. You can even start a roster with, with Rory and Spieth sure. up at the top and still put together the rest of your team without having to look at the other four guys and right. really hate the right. way that you're, the rest of your roster looks. You can get down even into the five range yeah. this week, and there's a handful of names that are down there that are at least somewhat respectable in terms of how they've been playing, the history that they've got. So yeah, I think this week I probably will own some Rory. I think his numbers come down <clears throat> from being in that 30 yeah, to 40% week. range that we were looking at. Probably closer into the 20 to 25% yeah, range I agree. this week. Which will be amongst the highest, because <clears throat> I just don't think the ownership's going to be that high this week for no, anybody. I think him and Ricky up at the top will be I the guys who you. attract the most attention right. there. Uh, but, you know, this is a question that we've been getting from a lot of folks. They've been talking about GPP strategy, and they say, well, you can't play this guy because he's going to be highly owned. Well, if you drop down oh. into the value range, you can't play this guy because he's going to be highly owned. And that's not really the way you want to be thinking about no. it is you can't really think of individual players as being players you can play or not play. It's really got to be the entire composition of yes. your Correct. roster. Yeah. So if you have one guy or two guys, I mean, the teams that all won this last week, I think for them, they all have Rory. They're, they all ended up with having Rory. On right. He was the second highest scoring player last week. Right. And it worked out that, you know, with Roberto Castro killing yeah. it in the 59 yep. range, it was a natural pairing if you started with Rory. Correct. And then you went down and grabbed a guy like Castro. That's not going to happen every week. But you look at the total ownership last week of teams, it was much higher than normal because Rory, Rory. was out there. But you don't need to be completely contrarian with no. every single one yeah. of the guys on your roster is what you're you saying. You can have one or two guys who are total chalk. That's right. On yeah. your roster and not have it worry at all. Then you can have two more guys who are moderately owned. No big deal. It's really only when you have four, five, six guys who are all heavily owned yeah. that you start to run into trouble. So don't outthink yourself with the way that you're building your rosters. Don't just think, wow, well, this guy's going to be at 25%. I can't own him. I mean, if he's the, like, like Lucas Glover this last week, there were people saying, wow, you can't own him. I mean, the most heavily owned he was in a contest was 14%. Yeah. And if you knew ahead of time that Lucas Glover had a chance to place, what, eighth in the tournament at 6,300, yeah. and, and I said, well, he's going to be owned by 14%. But you knew that was his upside. Would yeah. you still want to take him? It's it's a concept that Absolutely. I think a lot of uh, new new guys or new players make a mistake on. I actually detailed it very thoroughly in my la latest article, how to qualify for the Fantasy Golf World Championship. I talk about that same exact concept of you don't have to be contrarian on every single guy. And the big GPPs that I won, I wasn't. I had a couple of the higher owned guys along with some lower owned guys. So no, you're exactly correct. And yeah. And now's a good time for people to check out that article because DraftKings just today announced their uh, live oh, Live event. mini final, yeah. Live mini final. It's not as good as I thought it could have been. It could have been unbelievable. It could have been close to football like I think I if think. the prize pool, if you if you put another zero on the end of the prize pool there, yeah. we're pretty excited about it. Yeah. And I think it's still a great prize. I mean, oh, I, I want to play Pebble Beach. It's a four-day so trip bad. to Pebble Beach. Do you oh. get do you get one round at Pebble Beach? I think you get one round at Pebble and one <laughs> at um, was it Spyglass or Spanish? I think it was Spanish that you get. You so you get two rounds plus it's a live final. Live final and yep. there's twelve qualifiers, which I like because it's a smaller event. Right. Then oh, I like it. Yeah. The only the only difficult part about doing that is to put up you know this week the qualifier is a thousand dollars. You know, and if you if you look at the last place prize, it's only four thousand right. dollars if you get yeah. out there. So it's uh. Yep. 
So there's a little bit of a risk in terms of if, how much money you want to put up. They're going to have some three dollar, and they're going to probably have some thirty three. Well, to get into the thousand, they're, they're qual their steps, so you can qualify for the thousand dollar. And what if it's always going to be the thousand dollar? Is it always good? okay? So, I think I, so. Like that in previous years, even last year, they had even smaller right. ones for a couple of right. the seats. So that'll be fun. Hopefully next year they merge it all together. I'm, I'm glad they did something, but I hope next year they just blow it out because I think the demand the is outcry, there. The outcry was definitely there. And yeah. I think if they combine, like if they had had that as the live final with like a million five oh, prize God. pool or People something would, like that yeah. with, Back up the with truck. 50 qualifiers for it, yep. you'd fill those thousand dollar qualifiers up would. every single yep. week. And you could do it then too. And I like that it's at... Uh, that it's, it's for the travelers that yeah, week. Yeah, that's sweet. Which which is another thing that we really like. Cause what we, another thing we weren't as excited about with the way that this year's final is going is that the the championship event is going to take place at the at the players' championship. Mm -hmm. The tour championship. Yeah, the tour championship yeah. that last week of the year where there's only 30 golfers yeah. available. So yep. tons of overlap among the rosters. Right. Um, it, and yeah. you're not going to have to really make a ton of real difficult choices among the guys there. I mean, yeah, the gonna, problem is the overlap, and it's going to come down to one guy, one differential yeah, one guy on your roster that's going to make the difference between you winning the thing and maybe coming as you opposed know, close to, to last. You know, if you do it in an event like the Travelers worth a full 150 player field, you have to really have, you have, to have full knowledge of yeah. everybody who's out right. there playing week to week, which means you're going to need to know, you know, about 200 to 250 potential guys right. that could be in this event and then coming up yeah. to the 150 or so that are actually gonna play. So there's a yep. huge amount of skill in having your championship decided yeah. at an event like that. So I like that a lot. Hopefully next year they merge it all together. They do the pebble and the live yeah. final all at the same, because it doesn't need to be at a PGA event. No, it doesn't have to be. It was fun that we got to yeah. do it there. And I think at that's- the Deutsche Bank, yeah. I think it worked out well because DraftKings is right there in Boston. Right. So, but you know, I think they could make it merge it where you go play someplace and then you also have the live final and you get the best of, of everything going on. I'm so. still going to try and qualify. If you're going to try and qualify, be sure to read my article, but let's get back on track. And I was also going to say, you know, oh. if one of you guys qu does qualify and you need a quality golf mind along there with <laughs> yeah. you, but yeah. help you but out. But you can't do it. You can't do it remotely. It's got to <laughs> actually be in person. Right. Yes. Yeah. So I can offer <laughs> yeah. you a lot of advice up close there. and personal out there on the course. So. Just keep that in mind if you win that prize package, right? <laughs> so dropping down from the studs into kind of the upper middle area, are there, is there anyone in there? I know you're kind of high on Henrik Stenson. I think so. I think he sets up well. We went back to, we've been going back to guys who missed the cut the previous week. Yeah. And it sets up perfectly again this, this week as well. I mean, he didn't do well last week, but he's not a quill hollow guy. People right. look at Stenson and he can, he can hit the ball reasonably well, but I mean, he's a three wood kind of guy as everybody knows now. Cause he sprays team. his driver all over the world. Exactly. And that's his problem. But this is a course where he's been pretty consistent over the years coming off the miscut last week. I just think it sets up perfect again. Stenson's not always all that popular no. of a name to begin no. with. So I think that's a, that's a great starting point if you're going to look at building some rosters. If you want to just fade, if you want to just fade Rory and Ricky, yeah. you know, up at the top, let those first few guys go. I think you can get away with it this week because it's not necessarily a course where the studs are winning every year or they're up there competing right. for the title every year. So you can get away with dropping down right. this week as opposed to other weeks where you're going to have the studs all up near the top ten and playing right. down the stretch. So. I think that's worth taking a shot on, on a guy like Stenson this week. I like Jordan Spieth this week, and I like Jason Day this week up top. So right personally. up top, yeah. I do. So you're going to yeah, drop I'm, down. I like those two You're going to drop right I'm past Rory <laughs> to the next couple guys that are there. Okay. Other, other than those guys, I do like the 8K range. I think there's a tremendous amount of value in there. You're going to get guys who generally make the cut here as much consistently as you can possibly have at TPC Sawgrass. A guy like Matt Kuchar at 8,100. Snedeker at 8,100 I like. Um, Kevin Na at 7,800. I think Zach Johnson at 8,300. All of those guys right around that average price per player uh, point on DraftKings is going to give you a lot of value. And yeah, I'll be a, having those uh, a, a lot, lot of my guys rosters. in the 7,000 range. I, I, like, I like Chris Kirk a lot at 7,800. Coming I mean, off a very nice appearance he's in, in his last he's, tournament. Yeah, he's in great form. Yeah. This is a, a tournament that he's played well at, so I think it lines up really well for a guy like that. Mark. He's had two straight... 13th place finishes, I believe. Right, yeah. perfect. Yeah. yeah. So I'll take a 13th place finish from 7,800. No you drop down to 7,300, you got Mark Leishman there. 
His stats have been fantastic. He hasn't really had that breakthrough moment yet this year. But typically when it comes for him, it's it's in these really good fields where he's with a lot of other quality players. Last year it was the Open where he kind of came out of nowhere yeah, he and he was the guy up there at the top in the playoff near the end. Um, but uh, I think this week will be another great week for him. He's made the cut here four straight times. He's had pretty respectable finishes. And down at 7,300, he doesn't really have to do a ton in order to justify the price. Uh, anyone else in that 7K range that you're liking at all? Uh, Rafael Cabrera Bello at 7,100 is kind of intriguing. Not a lot of, you know, no no course history, I guess, for him. But Yeah, it's his first time here. Uh, so, I, you know, I don't know what to expect, but he's been playing great. So I think that would be definitely a guy that you could take a small a small amount of this week. I'm, I wouldn't necessarily overload on him. But, yeah, definitely a guy whose game has, has been playing really well over the last couple of months. Played well in the U.S. as well as... Uh, over in Europe, so he's, he's worth taking a shot at this week. And another guy I don't think we've necessarily mentioned too much of yet is Zach Johnson. If we go yeah. back up into the 8K range, yeah. tournament history here really stands out. A um, little bit of an adjustment this year so far with the PXG clubs. Yeah. But, you know, overall he's been a pretty consistent player. And again, when you get Zach Johnson in the 8,000 range as opposed to the 9s or the 10s, yeah. it's a pretty good bargain. You can easily put him with a couple of the other studs up top. So. You know, there's another name that uh, that I like quite a bit. How about week. this name? Now, this is intriguing because I think his ownership's going to be pretty low, but he's super cheap, and that's Jim Furyk. <laughs> yeah. Any interest at all? Are you taking a shot on him? I, I'm a little <laughs> bit concerned that I don't think he has the durability to compete. You know, as in a, for a top ten or fifteen. I mean, he's yet. He, he is in cut maker price range this week. I know he's he 6900. Is. And he's had a great tournament history, yeah. 6900, still some uncertainty, missed the cut last week yeah, his so first it, time back. It wasn't terrible, but I would have liked to have, I would have liked to have seen him at least make th- make it through the cut last week before I But I think a lot of people are thinking that as well. Yeah. Making him kind of intriguing cuz I do think his ownership will be under 10%. I just don't know what his upside is. He it seems to me like his upside is going to be capped pretty low even yeah. if he makes it through the cut. Well, that's what I was saying. Yeah, I don't think he can break through. I don't think he is at that point yet, but Yeah. Mighty intriguing though. It's inter- I mean I I'm, I won't be buying him, but I will be watching week to week to see yeah. if I see at least at least a spark. Maybe he misses on the line. Maybe he's just barely makes the cut. Right. I want to see progression after an injury like he had just to see his game come back. Because last year, very similar situation when Chris Kirk was out. I think he had a wrist injury yeah, too. Yeah, sure. And re- remember how long it took him to get right with his game. I mean, he had won an event last year. And then he hurt his wrist. And it took into this year right. before he was really able to regain his form. Because that really affects your swing. That's one of the right. areas where it's just it's really going to affect the way you swing the club. So that's an injury that I, I think I will wait on a little bit more than some of the other things that, that I see out there. Um, so yeah, I won't be buying him this week. I will probably just move over there and grab a guy like Luke Donald at 6,900, okay. which is a nice price for him as well. Uh, missed the cut here last year, but I think he had made like eight or nine straight cuts here with mm-hmm. a handful of top tens. <clears throat> He's been making most of the cuts out there this season. You know, he was like 70th this last week out of Quail Hollow, but Quail right. Hollow, that's not a course that fits no, Luke Donald. That's why we weren't all. on Luke Donald last week. Although I still got a few questions on from people. What do you think of Donald this week? Well, I didn't write him up. So, <laughs> so you don't think too highly so of him? So I don't think too highly, yes. Yeah. So <laughs> if you ask me about a guy, if if I wrote up 24 guys in my column last week and your guy wasn't on the list, that means they were below my top 24 <laughs> in terms of guys that I was thinking about. So I thought about other guys that were... Yeah. You know, probably a little bit uh, that I liked a little bit more. But Luke Donald's been great here. And he's been making cuts throughout this yeah, season. Yeah, he's been good. And if you look at, you know, if you, you mentioned Harbor Town, yeah. he looked fantastic right. just a few He weeks always ago. does. He dominates that Pete Dye course. Exactly. So. so I think if you're looking for, you know, a good corollary, that's a guy who I think lines up pretty well this week. And at 6,900, you know, I think that's a really solid play. Right. If you're starting kind of on that low end to look for guys. Anybody else that you want to take a look at? Well, let's, let's dive into a couple sleepers. We'll save a good share of the sleepers for the columns this week. Yeah, I mean, this, is a, this, is a, this is a tough tournament. Like this, this tournament is, is one of the more difficult ones in terms of DFS because so many guys are going to surprise people by blowing the cut. It's a very challenging course this week that's designed really specifically for a certain skill set. So, you know, the sleepers that we end up going with this week will be, uh, 
you know, ones that we had to take, we have to dive in and take a pretty good yeah. look at this week. So. Just off the top at 6,700, I do like Emiliano Grillo. I think he's a, an elite level ball striker who will fit well at this course. He's got a couple top 20s in his last three outings. So I'm really looking at him. I'll have some ownership of him. How about you? What are you thinking down in that range? A couple guys that I might take a shot on down there. I'll probably look at Daniel Summerhays, who's had a couple nice results here, who's been playing pretty good golf lately. Um, you know, tends to be fairly accurate, tends to putt the ball pretty well. So that's a name that I like. If I drop way down, and I hate to say his way name, down, way down, I hate to say his name on here because the number's still at six, Roger. So he still needs <laughs> six more top twenty-five. But oh, I got, see. You're just solidifying that bet is what you're doing. But yeah, by liking him this week, <laughs> yeah. I'm going to cast my black magic spell on him. But Freddie, Jacob's been, Freddie Jacobson's been good here over the years. Uh, kind of an awful tee to green player. I yeah. mean, there really isn't any other way to put that, no. but he's a great scrambler. He's a great putter. Right. You do those things well, and it kind of offsets right. some of those other things that, of course, like this. And he's not typically putting the ball into the water. So... Yeah, he's, he's, he's been decent here over the years. He's been decent on the year in general. If you're looking for a cut maker and you want to look down at you know 6,100, that's a guy that probably makes it through the cut, frees up a ton of salary for you at the top. So I think that's uh, that's that's probably the low name that I will look at this week. Okay. If, if anybody wants the 5,000 names, they, they're going to have to read our columns okay. this week because there will be a couple down there that I like as well. Sounds good. Anything else to add before we wrap up this week's Players' Championship? No, no, nothing this week. Okay. That's it. Well, be sure to check Zach out on Periscope this week. I filled in for him last week. Hopefully I did okay. Who won your contest? Um, I don't know who won our contest. So I've got to hear from you guys. Let me know who finished the highest in the $3 contest. I offered a black hoodie to everyone on Periscope last week. Uh, so let yeah. me know how you guys finished. So far, I'm the highest. And oh, you're dollar. Okay, was, you can have one. It was thirteen twenty-three <laughs> in the three dollars. So you got That's the that's the line to beat. So okay. I, I did watch you on Periscope. All so right. You, we need to find somebody in the top thousand. Basically. Okay. All right. Uh, at Fantasy Golfers is our Twitter handle. Email us at info at fantasygolfinsider.com with any questions that you have on strategy, lineup composition, any anything like that. We're always happy to answer that. Otherwise. Good luck this week at the Players' Championship. Let us know how you do, and we'll be rooting for you. Talk to you next week. Good luck. Welcome, friends. <clears throat> no, I'm, no, I'm <laughs> loose. I said to get that out. Citizens <laughs> of Gulf Dale, yeah. Okay.